well-anticipated semi-final. Um, a lot of people talked about that potential matchup. I would probably pick Rafa as the biggest rival I've ever, ever had in my career. It's difficult because you play against one of the best players of the history, but that's, uh, that's how it is. Last year, he, he just dominated the finals against me. Obviously, different conditions are going to be played. I believe I can win, uh, otherwise I wouldn't be here. It doesn't matter if it's a final or semi-finals. Uh, the player who, who will be playing better will be the, the player who will have better chances to, to, to go to that final. not many players that won against him in this court. We are uh, living the sport or this sport for these moments. And uh, here we are. Let's have a great battle. These are live pictures now ahead of uh, this blockbuster matchup, uh, making their way up the steps past all the names of the past champions. Nadal, of course, the greatest champion of all here. 13 titles, Djokovic the winner from 2016, about to be introduced here. The two legends already bubbling up outside as well on court Philippe Chatrier. This promises to be another blockbuster installment. Le premier joueur rentré sur le cours est troisième mondial aujourd'hui. Il a remporté 20 tournois du Grand Chelem, 13 à Roland Garros. Il est espagnol, Rafael Nadal. So for this one, your commentary team delighted to hand you over to Pete Hodges and Mark Woodford. Celui qui a remporté 18 titres du Grand Chelem, vainqueur ici à Roland Garros en 2016, le numéro 1 mondial, le Serbe Novak Djokovic. There are gladiatorial battles. And then there is Novak Djokovic versus Rafael Nadal. This, a 58th meeting between the two. So much history on the line here at Roland Garros. So much history between the two at all of their previous meetings. What will happen in this semi-final? I hope you're sitting comfortably. This should be another mouth-watering matchup between two of the all-time greats of the game. And talking about all-time greats, I'm very fortunate to be joined by two-time Roland Garros champion Mark Woodford in the commentary box. Myself, Pete Hodges, we will talk you through this one. It's a little later, it's a little cooler. Who do you think that might suit more? Well, heavier conditions, slightly heavier conditions. And as we go into uh, the early evening, maybe Djokovic played his last match under lights or in the evening that was scheduled against uh, Berrettini but uh, I think Rafa just being out the, on this court uh, as well I think that just elevates some photos him over there. Rafa, some photos just facing over there. Thank so you. all right so just a few reminders four minutes for the warm-up mm. one minute after the warm-up you need to be ready for play uh, the shot clock will be shown down there and also on the two for your towels, for the baskets, can you please have orange color? Yes, and you can have the gray color. For the ball, Max, if I have a doubt, I'll be going myself anyway. But feel free to call me if you want me to check anything. If you go outside for a toilet break or there is a medical, please your mask on. Any questions before we start? Rafa, would you like to choose? No, but heads or tails? Heads. It's tails. Sir? He serves. Stay? Yeah. So the coin toss out of the way uh, while the players warm up. Let's get the thoughts now of two times Roland Garros men's champion Jim Courier looking ahead to this one.
This is going to be an amazing semifinal. I mean, Rafa played so well to finish off his match in the quarterfinals, and this is his house, and he's defending it like he always does, like he's never won it before, trying to win it the first time. It's kind of amazing to watch. And Novak, is, uh, he's been tested in his last two matches. The Italians have pushed him. It's going to be interesting to see how he comes energy-wise. Who can control the baseline rallies? Uh, Novak's backhand pattern, hard cross court into Rafa's forehand, is uh, that's a key component of the matchup. Is Rafa hitting his forehand down the line well? If he is, then he's getting out of a bad pattern. You can throw out the best of three set matches when you think about what's going to happen here because best of five on this surface is so, it's the toughest thing to do for sure in tennis right now is to beat Rafa best of five on clay. And Novak is one of only two people who's ever done it. I've seen him play a lot here, obviously. I mean, the one that, that stands out the most is the one where Novak won because it's, it's the one that, that you kind of catch your breath because he, Rafa just doesn't lose here. And in that match, it was about the only time that I've seen Rafa look defeated in a match, like he couldn't find a solution. But we're just lucky. We, we get to watch this, this magnificent rivalry continue, and, and they're both in there. You know, Rafa's 35, Novak's 34. I mean, it's pretty remarkable that we're still enjoying it. Yeah, great to get the thoughts uh, of Jim Curry, of course, the Roland Garros legend himself, having won the men's title on a, a couple of occasions uh, here, and uh, taken particularly by actually the last thing that he mentioned there, the fact that uh, we're still seeing these two legends uh, going head to head. Nadal, 35 years of age now, Djokovic, 34 uh, years old. Really unprecedented, the uh, not just the dominance, but how long it's gone on, of course, uh, when they were up with Roger Federer. But now the two of them here uh, going head to head again. Also interesting as well the fact that uh, Djokovic has beaten him here before, but it's not for a very long time. And we look at the, uh, the head to head here, of course, the previous meeting, remember it well from. Uh, the Italian Open, of course, uh, slightly earlier on in this season, but only just a few weeks ago, where Djokovic seemed to have him, to be honest, in the final set. Uh, had a situation at 30 all there, and then didn't take it, and then got broken after that. He was actually, in many ways, very close after coming back into that match, but as uh, Courier said himself, this is a wholly different occasion. Djokovic has beaten uh, Nadal at those Masters 1000 events in the past, and then come here, and then found this just too difficult best of five here on court for Lee Chattery, but he does have that win uh, from 2015, although several observers do say that maybe Nadal that year wasn't quite 100%. It is still something for him to cling to, because otherwise it has been Nadal owning him here at Roland Garros, 7-1, to one, including that uh, thrashing in uh, last year's final. Super support for both as we look around. Of course, it's great to have so many spectators in for this one. Everyone making their way back in, of course, after the long-running uh, first semi-final. Very, very quick breaks for the, uh, the spectators before they want to get back in and watch this right from the start. And you can understand that already a terrific atmosphere as uh, we come to the end of the warm-up here ahead of this one. Djokovic was so pumped, wasn't he? The other night, when there were no fans to finish off his match with Matteo Berrettini. Very different look at things here, and he will appreciate that. And of course, the great man, Rafael Nadal, will love having the fans in. And this is what the players have wanted, what, it, what we've all wanted, really, as we try and get back towards normality in uh, professional tennis on the biggest stage. And this is certainly that. The stage very much set for this latest instalment of the most intense rivalry in the sport. Rafael Nadal to take on Novak Djokovic once again here on court Philippe Chatrier at Roland Garros. Two masters of their craft, two greats of the game, going head to head for the 58th time. Djokovic leads the head to head by one. But Nadal owns this place, a 7 1 head to head record. 
at Roland Garros against the world number one. What will happen in this semi-final? So much on the line. So it is the 20-time Grand Slam winner against the 18-time Grand Slam winner. And I've got a 17-time Grand Slam winner, Mark Woodford, alongside myself, Pete Rogers. And we will talk you through this semi-final. Say million euro question, it's more than that. Tactically, how is Djokovic going to approach this? The first set, I mean, you pointed out those stats, incredible record that Rafa has here at Roland Garros. I think the start, as always, against Rafa, best of five sets, you've got to plant the seed early. So much talk, Mark, about the conditions here. In terms of it being a lot hotter this year. The ball's flying through the air that much quicker. We thought last year was perhaps Djokovic's best chance or the rest of the field's best chance to defeat Nadal. It didn't work out that way. Well, last year, I think physically, Djokovic perhaps a, a little underpowered by the time he reached the final. Got caught in that lengthy five-set battle with Tsitsipas that not only physically but mentally was draining. something we saw a lot last year in the final two from Djokovic he hit over 20 drop shots ha have a look at Rafa look before he got back and, and did a 360 he just wanted to check to see where Djokovic was positioned and that's why that first ball came right into the stomach of Djokovic did well to keep it alive but the second one was too hot You're in the final. Didn't even get a game. Djokovic. He's in the first set. High attempt of a drop shot by Rafa. I was reading a few different angles on the match, uh, Pete. But, uh, one article was referring to that they think the drop shot will play an important part in this set. Encounter. Try the drop shot throughout the tournament time and time again. He hit 28 in the final against Nadal, but he won less than 50% of the points when he did it. Which today, and this year, the weather a lot hotter, the ball bouncy. It might try a different approach. Whatever he's tried in this game so far has worked, as it's a break point for the Serb. Nadal's favourite self. 
Sent down six aces against Diego Schwartzman in the quarterfinals. Ace number one for Rafa today, and a vital one. James that Djokovic comes out on top of. Avantage Djokovic. This was one of the articles that I'm sure you would have read as well. Brad Gilbert talking about the best chance for Djokovic to have success is to go hard into the forehand of Nadal. Saved. What did you make of that as a tactic for the world number one? Yeah, look, R Rafa is uh, a player who abides by routine uh, and angles and uh, play, trying to play correctly. So I feel like when, when Rafa is on the run out to the forehand, that he, he tries to bring it back cross court. Yeah, that's the safe way, that's the response. So sometimes he will just throw it up in the center third of the court. Djokovic has to play one more shot, but he has to reposition himself a lot closer to the baseline, if not inside, and then mount the attack. That was the other thing that Brad Gilbert talked about, looping it up high for that backhand uh, wing from Nadal. Nadal's point of view, and it works there. Djokovic not reading that play, trying to recover back into the middle of the court. And you have to be wary of Nadal's forehand, that slingshot that he does pull up the line, brings it from outside of the court back in, but he plays that from a bit more of a, a, a central location. When he's on the run, it goes cross court. When he's more stable, just taking one step or two steps to the forehand, that's when he can be lethal up the line. Well, if you remember last year in the final, the first couple of games lasted a long time. There were a couple of Brutal juice games, both went the way to the man in your picture, as did the next four games. So this already a hugely important game. Let's home service. Also feel that Rafa on the run out to the backhand, Pete. When he extends that right leg out, trying to get to it, that it behind the ball, the backhand generally goes cross court as well. But again, it's trying to set that play up and being able for Djokovic to respond. Oh, wow. Well, that's quite an extraordinary get from Nadal. And maybe Djokovic couldn't believe it himself. Well, I, I don't think I'm believing this either. How's the racket work by Rafa? Sending that back up 
high bouncing. We know that the courts are, are lively. They're bouncing like a hard court combined with the lively ball. Look at the grip. This one absolutely fascinating. What a start. Nine minutes on the clock. Feels like we've already played a set. Twists and turns in that opening game, but it is Nadal who saves a couple of break points and comes through it to lead one love. I mentioned earlier that 251 wins, just the five losses when he's won the first set. He's his match results here, 105 wins out of 107 matches. It's, well, almost beyond a joke when you look at the statistics with Rafael Nadal in what he's described in the past as his living room. But Djokovic has one of those two wins against Nadal here at Roland Garros. And he's got close before as well, of course, lost a five-setter a few years ago, 9-7 in the fifth. That, incidentally, was the last time they met in the semi-finals. And if we go that far, well, fans might not be in the stadium because we'll have an 11 p.m. curfew. Big game for Djokovic. Paints the line. Dan Zivel. Was out here earlier preparing for the first semi final. Djokovic took a, a late practice on this court. Didn't hit for more than 20 minutes. How did he look, Mark? Looked a little testy. Gaza. Was out here with uh, Murray and Vida, was feeding in balls. They were using a look like a, a young junior, a left hander. But uh, Djokovic actually elevated two balls out of the stadium, was not happy with the way the ball was coming off the forehand wing. You played in some huge matches in your career. Wow, How many times please. were there when you trained before it or practiced before it and had a terrible day but then played well and, and vice versa? Well, I think it, to, it does happen and you've then got to be able to, you know, retract yourself. Maybe it's to just take some solitary time. Maybe it is trying to get a little closer with your coach just talking about it, that uh, this is what I'm feeling. It's kind of honest. But there's no doubt that you're in form to arrive at this stage oh, of a Grand Slam. So even though he might have been a little testy, Djokovic, Nadal was out here er much earlier than that. And you know, he, he just goes through his typical routine. But Djokovic did walk off. It was, uh, as I said, he, a few balls went into the stadium, but head was down. strike well, so there's that forehand that uh, talking about see how many steps Rafa has to take from the previous ball it's maybe two at the max that's where he can add a little bit extra weight he loads on that left leg and just drives down the line Forehand 
around on the, the previous shot. That was the, the shot oh, he man. mentioned in the press conference against Schwartzman, saying, yes, I finished the match really well. Not many mistakes, hitting a lot of winners. Started to hit the forehand down the line. Tends to be the shot that you were saying earlier on in the tournament. If he's playing well. Yeah, you've got to get him on the move. You've got to get him to make four or five quick steps, not just one or two. Something that Djokovic has done brilliantly all week is take care of his serve. He hasn't lost his service game for over six sets. Broken in the second set against Musetti. Since then, though, he was able to win three straight sets there and then that four set match against Berrettini. So seven sets in total, and he hasn't had his serve broken in. Albeit one of those was only to four games due to Musetti pulling out. Again, he's in the slot for Nadal, and he's not going to back away go, from that go. forehand up the line. Well, you say how well that Djokovic ha has been able to save break points. I think he's only lost serve three times mm -hmm. in the entire tournament. But that goes into Nadal's strength in the tournament. As far as breaking serve, he, he, he has broken serve. I think it's close to 20 times in the tournament. times that Nadal has broken serve. So talk about oh, two okay. strengths going head to head. He played a lot of backhand drop shots in the final last year, Djokovic, and didn't have a lot of joy. Tough to play them when they're at your shoulder level, Pete. Well, this would be a steal, wouldn't it, for Nadal? Deja vu for Djokovic. Last year's final. It's even more of a steal. How has he won that point? The genius of Rafael Nadal as he breaks early. That was like a rifle, the forehand. And the Nadal back end, well, that was pretty ago. solid as well. Novak, reaction only. And Marka mentioned last year we had two very tight games to start the match. Both were won by Nadal. Do you think that was in Djokovic's mind there, trying to close out that game? Well, if it wasn't, I think it is now. Saying, you know, how the heck I've had two game points to be up to love, and I'm now love to down. And these are dangerous times now for Djokovic. We've mentioned how vital this first set is. I feel after what happened on this court last year, remember Nadal won the first two sets, six love, six two. Before the third set was competitive. Mental baggage has got to be in there somewhere for Djokovic. off the net. Well, I mean, we've called so many matches of Rafa, and you know that I, I certainly feel like he's probably one of the best volleys, if not the best volleyer. I think he's also in the top handful 
of when to play the drop shot. Just great awareness, quite often plays it when he's inside the baseline and the opponent generally has to travel the greatest distance across the court to retrieve it. It, it is incredible Zero. watching Rafael Nadal just here. Is in, every year, talk to people and they go, oh, maybe Djokovic can do it this time. Look, there's a long way left in this match, but the level he is playing at in these first 19 minutes, whatever he's done off the court, he's got himself so fired and ready. Momentum fully with the Spaniard. Backs up the break. A fabulous start from the world number three. He leads by three games to love. So again, a bit of a discussion, I think, again, with regards to the time spent in between the points, even as Duraki Moore. I, th I think as much as Nadal's, you know, arguing back there, as in it's probably good that the umpire's doing that nice and early, so at yeah. least he knows. Exactly. Sets the tone. You just wonder what's going Training through Novak Djokovic's mind plan. right Make now. I mean, he was close to perfect, and that was something oh, else I was reading today as well, saying this is actually a match that two of the greats could play their best tennis, and they could still lose the match. So Djokovic, having had game points in the first and second game, Nadal has rather dominated since then. And that was what happened last year in the final. What do you think Mark is going through his mind right now? Djokovic, I think he's just got to draw the line very quickly here in the sand or in the clay. That, that, that this is it. I've got to hold serve here. Start to. Well, there's no, no reason to panic. It's a break of serve. We might see a few breaks in this match. It's a difficult forehand for Djokovic. Don't mind that he's trying to accelerate through the ball, but in that direction, his weight is cutting across to the left, and yet he's hitting way out to the right. To this one, Zero leading it 29 28. But when on clay, the last five meetings have all gone Nadal's way, including leading here 7 to 1. Right now, it feels like those head to heads have more weight. Yeah, we, you can even add in to, to Rafa's head-to-head -head record against Serbians on clay. is 23 wins and seven losses. 
But that's at other tournaments. When, when you whittle it down to here at Roland Garros, it's just the one victory for Djokovic. second service. It's really interesting seeing what's happening here, Mark. Isn't it? The first few exchanges from the back of the court, Djokovic, I don't know whether you thought that, I thought did very well. He'd actually won a couple of the the both back on the baseline jewels mm -hmm. but it, it just feels now like the belief has gone he's trying to finish the point early and Nadal with a chance to get a double break lead oh. Oh. Nadal not having to do all that much in that game to break again Nadal that picture game. tells its own story for love. 166, the, the first serve was there. Hickey. Djokovic is aware that if he exposes that second serve, Rafa is so far back. How does Djokovic go about serving? Where does, it, where does he place it? Because it's going to be in reach of, of Rafa. A couple of these second serves have been slower pace than what we've seen Novak throw in. He's only won one point behind a second serve in two service games. emotion either coming from Djokovic although having said that it was pretty similar against Berrettini until right at the very end of that encounter he actually talked himself and said I just felt under tension the entire time I missed some chances at the end of the match the end of the third set was why that release he said it was liberating the release of emotion into the baseline there or did he? Rafa is pointing to a mark. Confirmed as long, so everything seemingly going against the surf right now.
important. Hit the back end of this set for you, Mark. For Djokovic in particular. Well, I'm always a believer that, you know, you, you try to get on the scoreboard so that you can maybe carry it into the early stages. But in this case, I, I think for Djokovic, he, like, just get this set over and done with. Has a, still a chance in this game. Another disappeared. What a serve, isn't it? No one strikes that serve better. We're talking about no one volleying better on a clay court, drop shotting. There's so many things. This 13 time Roland Garros champion does better than anyone else. Well, is it going to be deja vu for Novak Djokovic? He bageled in the first set last year in the final when many people thought that was one of his best chances of beating Rafael Nadal again in the, in the damp, heavy conditions. Ball flying through the air quicker this year. Still not going to plan for the world number one. Serving to avoid the bagel at love five. Masterful drop, loses the point because Nadal is Zero just playing chance. on another planet. Djokovic wasn't even in a bad position, but the touch, the feel, just insanely good. healthier oh, position thanks. the ball landing inside the baseline and Djokovic uh, shuffles up to it not much reaction time for Nadal to chase it down how important this game could be for, for Djokovic. I get what you were saying before, but maybe just to say to himself, this is a different match to what happened in the final last year. Sumptuous 
forehand once again from the dark. Oh, there it is. Coming around the outside of the ball. Bringing it back in to play. Unlike last year's final, Djokovic does avoid the bagel. He'll be happy with the line call, but he'll be happy that he's on the board Nadal in this opening set. Will be a lot later than what he would have wanted. Lifted Berrettini the other night. I wonder whether here there's a lot of Serbian fans in and around Shatri, whether they can lift Djokovic. A nice return too. So here's a foothold in the Nadal service game for Djokovic. His footing in the process. So talked about frustration of not closing out that match against Berrettini. Well, he was up five points to four on serve in the third set tie break. And he barely made an unforced error all match. He made two in a row, one of which, due to the fact he just lost his footing at the worst moment. here Pete is that he's going forward to it he's not allowing the ball Rafa spin to play him he's trying to diffuse it by getting in a little earlier so the contact is below the shoulder you get a little bit more feel out of your fingertips <laughs> that's a Djokovic-esque return wasn't it at full stretch but then it was an Adal-esque forehand. Yeah, I wonder whether he'd still win the point if he just rolled it cross-court. Djokovic uh, delayed his response uh, coming out of the corner.
Go, Hunter. That might just get under the the skin, uh, uh, under the in the head of of Djokovic. If he's not able to break serve, you know, he's had these opportunities. And that was the thing fascinating, Mark. Looking at the stats before this match started, those were actually the areas that Djokovic was winning in. He was shining. Yeah. yeah. And the pressure points throughout the week, the last couple of weeks. And Nadal is in the zone today. Still yet to be broken. And he has a set point. Merci, mesdames et messieurs. This set that will be a missed bounce smash and not getting the two smashes away that he had when he was facing his first break point. for the sky hook, the LA Lakers. We're gonna to have to name something for Rafa. It's what these two can do on a tennis court though, Mark. You just shake, you just shake your head at yep. times watching points like that. Second set point. to the backhand side up. It seems like Djokovic is dealing with it better this time around. He's still having to make contact behind the baseline. I think if uh, the times that Djokovic has certainly affected Rafa in their head-to-head -head is when he can be maybe a couple of feet within that baseline. At the moment, he's four or five feet. Strings up the line. I'm on top of the rally. Chance to break the Nadal serve once again. It's a fifth break point of this first set for the serve. Djokovic does break. And even though the set might be gone in terms of trying to turn it around, the match has a different feel to it. 
Nadal Nadal leads 5-2. This is that ridiculous point again. I mean, this was an incredible get. The ball bouncing on the baseline. He's done so well to get the lob up like that. But how about this for a shot from Nadal, which we still don't really know what to call. I don't really know what to go with. It's almost like a backward slam dunk. It was a good response from Djokovic on that occasion after losing a point like that to bounce back and still break. Robles. Feeling a bit more confident now. More belief. Yeah, being able to hold serve and pick up that break. A couple of opportunities. Still, the, uh, what, what is troubling for Djokovic on serve is the point one behind the second serve. Let's have the help of new balls here at 2-5. I'm going to ask you that with regards to the second serve. He's hit one double fault. Zero chance. And he's won one from nine now. So does he need to be bolder with the second serve? Yes. Uh, you, you know, just just rolling it into the middle of the court to, uh, w with limited pace, it, it seems. It doesn't seem like it's got to a lot of sting to it. Rafa is standing way back and is able to just hit high and heavy pushing Novak back Maybe a, a bounce that wasn't favourable for Novak. He got crowded on his backhand. So the ball lost its zing and Rafa took care of it with his own forehand. Nine winners. Just the one off the forehand for Novak. He's lost his first serve percentage. An inconvenient time. Finishing forehand. Dance. Not the best backhand by Nadal. Nothing on it uh, at all. It was just bare. And uh, Djokovic dispatches the winner. The second forehand winner for Novak. First ace for Djokovic. And had 10 against Berrettini. First serve percentage, incidentally, against the Italian. It was 70% that night. He, he was holding serve so well and often so easily. Only faced three break points all night. Whereas today, first serve percentage, 56%. We've already talked about the struggles behind the second serve. Yeah, that, 
there's the difference. Well, Berrettini to well. Nadal. Berrettini was standing a lot closer to the baseline to return the first and the second. And uh, Novak picked up some cheap points. He had a 77% win rate for the match. But uh, we always anticipated that Nadal would just go further back. If he gets into trouble, he'll go further back again. Gives him more time to sight the ball for the return. Just put enough on the overhead. Nowhere safe. Nadal's on the tennis court. Especially when there's so much landscape for him to move around in. Yeah, calmly executed on the final forehand by Novak. You could see the ball was just dying in a low to the surface. Novak still able to get that racket head below the flight of the incoming ball. Djokovic, so, so and this set isn't done just yet. Nadal went by Sanchez at one. Five three. Milena has just looked a bundle of nerves and worry. Ryan Vida though trying to get his charge going. Suddenly, this is a, a pretty important service game for Rafael Nadal. The set looked like it was in the bag at five, love. Yeah, a few unforced errors by him the last time he stepped up to serve at 5 1. Almost an identical backhand miss in the tiebreaker against Berrettini when he was a few points away from winning the match. Dumped a backhand and a forehand. Ridiculous. 
Well, just when you think you're in a winning position, you've got the upper hand. Novak played a fantastic half volley zero. there. And, well, I mean, do you say that it's a, a, a defensive stab? But it, he judges it so well, Rafa. Is anything defensive with Rafa on the ball? How many times has he got himself out of jail in, in points? He's got another set point, three of them. This time it's Djokovic's turn to do a Houdini act and steal a point. Karan Perkins. Some of these rallies, though, they are difficult to commentate on because you run out of adjectives of what these two are doing on the tennis court. Is set. Once more, plays the drop shot, forces Djokovic, who was hitting from deep in the corner on the juice court, he's got the greater distance to travel. He might have lost the point, Rafa. He certainly forced Djokovic into to using some leg strength. Set point number six for Nadal. Beginning of the contest, it was Djokovic who couldn't convert on the big points. Suddenly, it's flipped, and now it's Nadal who's struggling on the bigger points and closing out games. So we'll see Rafa maybe take up a bit of time here, maybe revert to very simple tennis. Serve down the tee on this juice court. And by a fraction, the return misses. Does Nadal find his serve inside the line by the same amount? And Nadal will be hoping it's lucky number seven. Another fantastic set of tennis from Rafael Nadal. And just how important could it be? Takes the opener, 6-3 in just under an hour. Robles. Well, who would be a chair umpire? Mark Whitford was just saying that. Getting it from both sides of the chair, Eva Razdaraki Moore at the sit-down. How about Djokovic complaining that there was too much clay around the baseline and felt that that had been added before the match. And then the other side, you had Nadal saying, can you start the, the shot clock later? Because pe the fans are still screaming, they're still making noise. And of course, it's meant to be at the umpire's discretion when that shot clock starts. Usually it's meant to be once the noise it's dies nice. down from the fans, but there's almost just constant noise. So mm. it's, it's difficult to get that one right. Either way, both players just trying to get a, an edge. It was well managed by the chair umpire. John Zegel. How do you assess that first set if you're Novak Djokovic, Mark? A 
think there's daylight now. A lot happier, more content that Djokovic was able to come back into that set and ultimately push Nadal even when he was serving it for a second time. If it had been a whitewash, 6-love, six 6-1, six that could have been serious trouble for Novak. But the way now that uh, it's unfolded, I, I think we could be in for a heck of a match here. Nadal is throwing in a few more unforced errors, more than what we're probably accustomed to seeing. But again, through the tournament, it's not necessarily the balance between winners and unforced errors have been always positive for Rafa. It's other areas that have shone brightly. Reminder of those statistics, incidentally. Nathan Nadal has only lost twice in a Grand Slam since 2013 when winning the first set. The most recent, though, of those losses against Steph Tsitsipas at the Australian Open this year. Talking of the Greek player, first ever Greek player into a Grand Slam final with a fantastic five set win over Sasha Zverev. So he awaits the winner of this encounter. Good start from the Serb. Regards to set two. Nice love service hold. Djokovic playing close to the baseline, rushing, and harrying Rafael Nadal. Forced Nadal a little bit wider. Made that forehand up the line a little bit tougher. It's that unusual period of a match where Nadal has won the first set, but the momentum is firmly with Djokovic.
the back foot. No problem to Rafael Nadal. He apologised to him. Not sure how much he meant it, Mark. But either way, wasn't bad. Well, I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. But if Novak can hit another quality return like that, how often can Nadal keep repeating saves? He's missed it. And Djokovic does break early. And that's the first time we've seen that sort of emotion from the world number one. Feels like it's just carrying the momentum on from the back end of set number one to engineer the break. Elena's looked nervous throughout, but maybe getting rid of some of her nervous energy there. <laughs> she tends to live every moment in all of his matches. this ability from Rafa still two points away from maybe breaking back but he's just lost serve and that reset button is pushed been able to deal with the falling behind two games to love now up love 30 asking the question in this game Djokovic hasn't had the answers perhaps over forcing <laughs> tough to decipher what the crowd are, are chanting it's right. Novak and Rafa <laughs> mixed, mixed. <laughs> Nova it sounds a bit like Nadal breaks straight back. The response of a 13-time Roland Garros champion. 2-1. Well, the return, it's just a heavily rotation, heavy rotation, gets up high and Djokovic, it's, and we're only talking just small margins here, just loses a bit of direction and perhaps heaviness of his shot. That uh, opens the door for Nadal, who slams it shut immediately at love. And I said there, Mark, in terms of Djokovic perhaps over-forcing, it's just the skill of Nadal, isn't it, in terms of how he forces opponents to overforce with his, <laughs> with his movement. He, well, he, it, it must be like, again, I've, I haven't faced him, but it, he must force you to go for smaller margins, small targets. You want to hit the line and again, find margins, you end up missing. Bottles in place. In place in his living room. Two sets away from what would be a 14th while on Garros final. Playing here for the first time with a statue. 
Just outside, Paul Philip Chatrio. A magnificent statue, too. But responding there from going a breakdown, getting the break straight back. One, two, second set. So he's had a workout. How to hold serve, get a, a cheap free game, Rafa. Certainly gone through a few wobbles over the last couple of service games. Change up sent in by Nadal. Just hitting that backhand up the line to Djokovic's backhand higher over the net. It might land a little shorter, but it certainly kicks up given the liveliness of the court still. That may change as uh, this match enters dusk, becomes a, a slightly heavier. These two are playing for the 58th time. Is there a danger when you play someone so often that you overthink the tactics? Because you know their game so well. <laughs> Don't know how, quite how to answer it because I, I've never played someone 58 times. But you know, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> like, uh, I've played someone maybe 14 times, mm. but I mean. And it was like the losing end of most of those 14 times, or 13 times. It's nicely done. But even those times that you played 14 times, is in, did that come in, in in thinking, right, well, I've got to switch my tactic here, but then he knows I've got to switch my tactic. And uh, it can come become very overcomplicated with the respect. Well, I guess because it, for me, because it was one-sided in the end, I think that I picked up my final victory over this said player who beat me that many times. I, I just threw all the tactics out the window. I went with something very different and was able to engineer. It was a, a, a win, finally. It might have thrown my opponent. The goal comes through the game and levels it in this second set at two games apiece. The only reason I say it's 58 times, there's so much tactical analysis that goes on between these two players, they've had so many duels. I just wonder what, what must be processed in their mind. They must go out there with a certain tactic, but then they're right. having to adapt and change. And, and so much mental baggage, so to speak. Well, we spoke the other night of Djokovic working with a, a company of data and analytics. And I'm sure after you've played someone that many times, there's just a wealth of information. And does it get confusing then?
cheap miss off a second serve from the dark. Pivic suddenly starting to do a bit better behind the second serve. Just under cooking it. Plenty of twists and turns right now on this one. This guy's making a few unforced errors. There's so much respect on either side of the net. Djokovic moves in front 3-2. Djokovic, incidentally, if he does reach the final hit, will go level with Bjorn Borg in second place for most Roland Garros finals. Take a look at the the rallies one. So Djokovic just wants the mid-length rallies to happen. Maybe a tad surprising that that Rafa 28 as opposed to 19 from Djokovic in the zero to four shot rallies. You know Rafa is uh, all about rhythm. Loves to methodically extend some of the points. Well, for those of you who are, like your social media and Instagram and Twitter, there's all sorts of memes out there with regards to Rafael Nadal holding the Coupe de Mousquetaire when he's about 60 years of age because it just feels like he's going to go on forever. If he does reach the final, incidentally, here today, he will be the oldest ever finalist at Roland Garros at 35 years and, and 10 days. Another little record just to tick off. He's got to get there first. Training two, three, second set. Taking the time away from Nadal. Zero tennis. See Rafa just throwing it up. But not overplayed by Novak. Easy power off the face of the racket. Djokovic showcasing why he has the best backhand in the business. Zero point. Yeah, how good was the cross court? And they're taking that opportunity up the line. That's a type of play. That uh, 
he could certainly employ over and over. Yes. Backhand slice might be a lob by Rafa. If he gets two hands on it, then I think that he would roll it cross court. to the other. His backcourt exchanges starting to edge towards Novak Djokovic. How well has he bounced back from that devastating love five on the scoreboard in the first set. Been able to calm himself and focus. That's three break points. allowed Nadal to move around and strut his Jones stuff. Run. Nadal wins and just how important could that little mini battle be gee this was hanging in the balance though Novak had an opportunity with the forehand volley to just open up the racket face and send it down the line instead chose to try and angle it back He'd love to replay that point. Djokovic would have liked that one to have been in, because the stunner of a return. Instead, he'll get a second serve to swing at. Just missed it, and Djokovic breaks again. Re-establishes the two-game cushion in this second set. Djokovic, Mark, you mentioned the start that Djokovic made, the fact he went five love down. Since then, he's won seven of the last ten games. What's the reason for the turnaround? Well, he hasn't panicked. I think he's just trusted that his form leading into this match it was good enough to, to stay and play with Nadal. Numbers that start with the serve into play and the win rate.
keeps going there with the, the backhand drop shot. And Nadal continually onto it in a flash. And look, I, I, don't, I don't mind someone against Rafa trying to unsettle him and throw in this drop shot. Unfortunately for Djokovic in, in that instance, when he went up to play the two-hander, I think the lights certainly interfered with him making contact. And I, I will say, Pete, uh, you know, we've had the, the opportunity a couple of times to have a hit of tennis and use the tennis ball so that we can really describe what it's like to people tuning in at home. I was out on this court the other day doing an interview and the lights came on and it, it was blinding. stage I used to think when we've seen players point up at the, the sun it's almost like oh, I was in my eyes and throughout this tournament they've been talking about the lights so that, that first hand experience I was like okay maybe it does at a certain level the ball gets lost in the lights that's what Djokovic was referring to so it's smart to play the lob and that's why, yeah. maybe why we're seeing the lob so much right. Nadal complained about those lights against Yannick Sinner in, in round four <laughs> to the noise on Chatriot. Turns, and uh, Nadal relentless once again. Drop serve and bounces right back. Opportunity to break the Djokovic serve. A couple of break points now. Not yes. wanting to see Djokovic move to a 5-2 lead in this second set. Nadal. That's a brilliant point from Djokovic. Waited for his moment to transition up the court. His forehand just getting Nadal on the stretch, and he was quick to see. No problem with the lights that time. Plucking the ball out of the air. Still a break point to save, though, for the Serb. as well. Nadal just popping up out of that backhand. I'm entirely sure what the, the conversation with the umpire was about. There's been some towel confusion in a few matches. 
this tournament. More importantly, Djokovic back to juice. using every area of the court. And it looked like it was going to be Djokovic's point, but he cannot believe he's missed that. I mean, it's in the most difficult position. Avantage Nadal. His magnificent play gets into a strong position. And it's just amazing that uh, Nadal can place it into that high backhand volley after an exhausting rally as it was it's a third break point at the moment the importance of this game precious to both players and understandably he's taking a little bit extra time here both players two lung busting points in a row from both of these players is just out of this world. Djokovic. And again, we've talked about Nadal's court coverage and leading to Djokovic over forcing. It was, was it the same there, but the other way around. Mm -hmm. Again. 120, the second serve by Djokovic, allowing Nadal too much time to get around and hit a return of forehand that had plenty of juice. One of the main reasons, though, for Djokovic being far more competitive, first serve percentage in this set up at 70% now. So he hasn't exposed that second serve as much. Do you hear that? Oh. Oh. Fabulous. 
Djokovic weaving his backhand of wand. Avantage Djokovic. Yeah, taking care of a ball that was pretty much neutral from the Dal. It did look long, I have to say. And confirmed. Might be a second serve. It's a good overall from Eva Hasdaraki Moore. Djokovic doing what he couldn't do earlier in the set, and that's back up the break. And now he's a game away from leveling this semi final. Leads by five games to two. Well, I think he's asking Wayne McEwen, one of the uh, assistant referees, to uh, just pay attention to the time. I, I felt like I heard Rafa say, I, I don't think it's fair what, what's going on. We know that he's spoken to Eva Azaraki. That, uh, why are you pushing the clock when he has to go to either side to get the towel? Trainer not being called on, it was the supervisor yeah. or one of the supervisors coming on. It's been absorbing and fascinating. I feel there's plenty more twists and turns to come. points not being able to convert them now serving to stay in this second set at 2-5 again just trying the, the slow loopier ball this time gets the full treatment from the Spaniard Threw in a couple of these against Berrettini. Just to change that pace, Berrettini had so much firepower. Once it, it got a little darker, the conditions were heavy, he was able to just power through the court. Novak uh, did have success, just trying to change that pace. up to the challenge. Compact return. Oh. 
Mark, what do you make of Nadal calling the supervisor on to sit down? Is it, do you think he is rushed? It's, uh, first up percentage is, is still pretty good in this set, it's like 70%. I don't uh, generally uh, agree that he should be getting any more favourable length of time. Yes, it's a little different that we have crowd 5,000 from June 9th. But uh, it is discretionary for the chair umpire. It works both ways, both ends of the court. Very good game though sure, from the Spaniard if he is feeling under pressure from his opponent and from the clock. Sure, and perhaps from the umpire. Well. Didn't show it in that game. And we'll ask the question of Djokovic as to whether the world number one can serve this second set out. So just keep an eye on that time, incidentally. An hour and 44 minutes. A reminder, the curfew here. Is in an hour, is in two hours and five minutes. So, if this was to go the distance, I don't think we'll get it done without the fans leaving. But there's still a long way left to go. Maybe even in this set. Djokovic hoping not. He's hoping he can get it done right here, right now. 5 3. to start. It was a second serve, it found the corner. And just aided Novak. Court position is very healthy. Not playing down the court or through the court. He played outside the court with the final forehand. Serve he would have wanted. Well, not backing it up with the forehand. Maybe the return coming in through a little quicker than he anticipated. And even now with the unforced errors. just witnessed. Guns it's certainly off the time. planet. Scurrying, lots of little steps. And again, when he's pushed out wide on the backhand, he gets that yes, right leg and, and drags the ball cross court. Again, Djokovic not being able to put the overhead away. Will it come back to bite? <laughs> more central of the approach there, and maybe that was what caught Nadal out. Bold. Oh. Certainly gutsy by Djokovic. Can't believe he's missed it, having made the one before. Ah, just coming down the middle. Give him the easy ones. <laughs>
know, you just sense that pressure at the moment. But he started the first point of that game with a super strong second serve. And given that it was picked back to 30 all. Not wanting to go to Nadal's forehand, clearly. Break point, Nadal. Turn from Nadal again, and just showing a glimpse that oh. he is human. I'm missing the back end. You can't tell, but he's absolutely livid with himself. Just pauses, bit of a shake of the head. That is a poor miss, though. It's opened the door, welcomed Djokovic back into this game. To ghost in Djokovic. Maybe Nadal saw it out the corner of his I eye. Nadal well, apologizing because the ball skidded through, possibly off the service line. So, will we see Rafa revert to conservative play here? Off that backhand, maybe keeping it up the middle of the court, maybe higher rotation clearance over the net. It's a sensational point from Djokovic. He keeps throwing caution to the wind. Nadal just losing his footing there. Keeping the point alive at least. But Djokovic sizes the forehand up. Certainly directing a lot of serves. First serves and second serves into the Nadal backhand. Set point. The response of a champion. An 18-time Grand Slam champion that is... Novak Djokovic, he takes the second set to level the match. 6-3. It's Nadal to begin in set three. What? Question that Novak will answer for us as this third set unfolds. How much did that take out of him to win the set? To be able to, the, the, the mental side of the, applying himself, coming back, dragging back from love five to being now locked at a set apiece. We saw the way that Nadal handled Schwartzman. That was a very hotly contested match. said in the press conference that turning point there he was 4-3 down in the third set and a set of piece 
from there, and then went and won nine games in a row. Played so, some of his best tennis. And I also was actually thinking before Nadal went off the court there, I was thinking that might have helped Djokovic as well, because he put so much effort into to win that second set, just to have a little breather himself. He talked as well about the match against Berrettini, where they had to go off the court, of course, for the uh, for the curfew, and he said that helped him just recharge, resettle. So you often see it, no matter who's on the tennis court, the greats or lower end players. Big set goes one way, start of the, the next set, so critical. Tick past the two hour mark. Turn a few times now as well from Djokovic. Perhaps just forget what went before, particularly at the back end of that second set, as he edges in front. Set himself early, full rotation with the hips. A helicopter finish too. And Djokovic for once, nowhere near. A reminder. Know who the winner of this match will face in the final. Steph Sitsipas reaching his first ever Grand Slam final, winning in five sets earlier on today against Sasha Zverev. That's why these two are, are only playing in the early stage of a, of a third set at 10 past 9 p.m. in Paris. the overhead away to do with the lights Put that one flush to get around that forehand. to reset once again the defense phenomenal from Nadal Djokovic just kept knocking at the door
Second ace, you know about Djokovic. A superb service game for the world number one. And we're having in this third set. Even support on Chatrier. What is a very even match? Can for me a Seen plenty of the backhand from Djokovic. This one off the forehand, and it's safe to say Nadal did not pick it. To control that power is sublime. And these are big moments right now. Go back to their match, their most recent match, incidentally, in Rome. It was Nadal who took the first set, and Djokovic responded. And then there was that moment, 2 1 in the third. And there were those break points for Djokovic, who was on top of the match at the time. It's his turn just to work Djokovic oh, over man. side to side until he goes back in behind with a blitzing strike. As I was mentioning, the match in Rome turned on a sixpence. Djokovic had some break points early in that third set. He didn't take them, but I was unable to motor away. In a similar sort of moment here.
Djokovic is the one who's creating the difference that we are seeing from the serve from those first five games to now. He's oozing confidence from the back of the court. Showing the variety of the forehand wing. Here is a break point for the world number one. Let's see. What pressure. Easy as you like, saves the break point. This is the famous one-two punch. How many points has he won throughout his career with the slider out wide and, and the forehand? Djokovic knew what was coming, just can't do anything about it. See much in terms of emotion from the Spaniard. He recognizes just how important this game could be in the context of not only this set but the match in total. Seven minutes. Had a fair few long games. It's taken around two hours to play the first two sets, even though they were both 6 3. Problem. See Djokovic struggle a few times with that shot, not Nadal. Premier service. Oh, it's delightful. So, Nadal. Devilish bit of improvisation from Rafael Nadal as he survives in the game. And just how important could that hole be? Nadal, third seed leads, 2-1 in the third.
lot of pretty even stats there. Two percent the difference with the first serve percentage. Three percent with the first serve points one. Just the one percent on the second serve points one. And just the three percent with the service games one. It's it's nice and even, Mark. It, it is. But have a look at the the two players here on camera. One looks on the left. Djokovic quite composed, relaxed, present. Have a look at Nadal. He just looks like he's gone through the ringer already. Working overtime just to survive on serve. Gutsy hold, wasn't it? For 2 1. So often you see it missed break point opportunities and then the hangover effect. So this is big now for Djokovic. Doesn't want deja vu happening with regards to what happened in row. It's being made to wait. A few movement, a little bit of movement in the, the stance. Still going with that slider wide to the juice court. And it provides a bit of space, doesn't it? Territory for him to then quickly direct line of play to Rafa's forehand. Coaching team. As far as Novak Djokovic is concerned, Talk about the hangover effect. He's not taking the, the two break points in the previous game. Holds to love and it still very much feels like it's the world number one with the momentum here, Mark. Yep. Nice easy game for Novak and then the pressure back onto Rafa. Wouldn't be surprised that we see a few more easier games coming from Djokovic when he's holding serve. Rafa having to work exceptionally hard just to keep his nose in front by holding his own. It's a good start. Ideally, Rafa wants to be able to just hold serve, but if he could get a clean, cheap game so that he's not investing a lot of energy.
Kwanza. And here the Serbian fans nolle the chart. Smell blood here, I think. Seen a couple of ropey smashes from Djokovic. This time it's Nadal's turn. Maybe mark combination of the lights and, and fatigue. Well, generally we see Nadal size the overhead up, he gets back and then comes forward to it. I think that was there onto him pretty quick. It was dropping fast. So there was no body weight going into it. Fault. Djokovic made the return. Not a good overall from either Asbaraki Moore. Very experienced umpire. Be a second serve for Nadal. Missed it. Yes. There's more chances for Novak Djokovic. Two break points. Delicately placed by Rafa. You could see that oh he hesitated. God. Wasn't exactly sure that was going over. Fine margins Merci. of this sport. Of these two players. Second break point. What a serve. We know his favourite is the slider out wide. Like all the greats, they just seem to know when to do the other one. Yep, maybe Djokovic might have been standing. More towards the slider serve. Rafa picking up on it. Position. It had to be big, but for him, it was Djokovic. too big. Does Djokovic look like he's getting some more pop from that forehand? That... Well, I was just thinking the exchanges from the back, it feels like Djokovic has more. Yeah. More, it's, it's heavy. It, it's almost like it's more RPMs. Certainly, and responding off of the court more so than Rafa's forehand. Created yet another break point. Oh. 
This time Djokovic does convert. Djokovic. And it's first blood to the Serb in set three as he breaks for a 3-2 lead. And Mark, you, you pointed it out earlier at the last sit-down, you feel Nadal is feeling this more. How much of a factor is it that we've got to remind ourselves that he is 35? Well, I'm not sure that age is playing a factor here, but I think it's just a general pressure that Djokovic is applying. Nadal doesn't seem like he's getting any value from his shots at the moment. Djokovic is rising to the challenge, and we're seeing more unforced errors come from Nadal. 34 in the match so far. There we have the unforced nice. errors. None from Djokovic in this third set. To a difference of 12. Well, quite incredible. We're just seeing that the unforced error stats, and this is similar to what we saw from Djokovic against Berrettini the other night. Zero unforced errors, which is quite amazing to do that, especially against someone like Rafael Nadal, who we've said time and time again, you have to... You have to force and press, and he is forcing and pressing, and yet he's not missing when he's doing that. The last time, incidentally, that Rafael Nadal lost more than one set in a match here at Roland Garros was against Novak Djokovic all the way back in 2015. That's how rare it is. But he's up against it right now. The 13-time Roland Garros champion. It's Djokovic with the momentum. Djokovic with the break and the 3-2 lead in this third set. We're all from the chair, so it'll be a first serve again. is pretty heavy right there. Zero Just crunching the ball. something that you spotted, Mark, and you're right on it with regards to the top spin and the rotation on the ball. Yeah, Djokovic, set one, 2,800, set two, 2,905, set three, 3,120. He's upped at each set, and he's now only 100 RPM less than Nadal off the forehand wing, which is something you never think people can really get close to Nadal on. Close to that return, that is just insanely good. 
comes fun. Well, naturally, when you serve and volleying, slides it out wide. Djokovic has basically got to cover the line, middle and the line. He's got to give up some piece of ground. And it's the cross-court one. it away into the open space and, and that court certainly didn't help not what were your sort of thoughts here that Friends. shot there oh. yeah look not a, not a bad play to get it over the head of your opponent i mean that's just unlucky hits the net and shoots onto you into your body. Let's see. So Nadal with the chance to break straight back. So let's see if Novak, one more break point that he faces. Does he go with the reliable serve up the tee? It's the rally of the match. <laughs> Two of the game's greats going toe to toe. The court coverage, the ball striking, and the inspiration. Well, for two thirds of that rally, Djokovic was the one that was under an immense amount of pressure. And then it's the rotation on the forehand, was able to push or neutralise Nadal. Now the crowd are into this. What a time to play a point like that as well, a break point down. How important will that point be? 23 shots. gone before. Having to flatten the ball out though. Feel like that that's not something that Rafa 
was really anticipating to do continually. Plays with much more margin. Third break point of the game. He's got him. Nadal steals the point and with it steals the break. And it's three all in the third. Nadal just hanging there in the ad court. And the ball comes back to that forehand and he hooks it up the line. This is the match that. I think the whole tournament we're anticipating, perhaps hoping, would happen. The two greats meeting in the semi-final, and it is living up to expectation. 84 points each. And Djokovic has only played one unforced error Merci, in this set. Merci. That game was very much won by Rafael Nadal. And, and having said that, that he doesn't, uh, has not... Uh, given unforced errors and we're still locked at three all so he's not getting any reward to have the fans back. Quite full capacity, but the 5,000 in here making plenty of noise. These two just showing their mental toughness. Again, it was an epic game, and you think there's going to be a bit of a hangover effect for Djokovic, but just like Nadal after the 23-shot rally, he's right back at it. And affected by losing that game. Wow. Zero count. But the ball just responding off of Djokovic's racket. He's getting much more value, it seems. to Nadal's forehand and extracts another error. Three break points. Well, we always talk about how difficult it is. But both of these players talk about the importance of staying in the present. And Djokovic did it there. After being broken in the previous game, he's able to strike back in the next game. And Mark mentioned that again. I know we've talked about it all tournaments, staying in the present. But are we watching the two greatest at doing just that? As in, you know, the 23-shot rally, Nadal wins the next point, having lost that 23-shot rally. We, we see an epic game, Nadal wins it, and you think maybe he's turned the momentum. No, Djokovic still keeps his level the same, comes back greatest clay court player uh, is what who we're watching right now under an intense amount of pressure and not being able to push that reset button quite as as cleanly as we've seen in the past thanks to the opponent Nadal just looking a little flustered I mean as I said earlier it's not not been since 2015 that he's lost two sets in a match here so he's not used to being under this much pressure Reprise. Mark at the sit down there, you were just saying we're watching the greatest ever clay court player. I don't think there's too much argument against that. But Novak Djokovic, he's got to be 
close to being arguably the second greatest almost. Arguably, yes, he is. Uh, imagined uh, what his clay court uh, record would be, certainly here at Roland Garros, if it weren't for Rafa. This, as I said earlier on, if he wins today, goes level with Borg with regards to most finals made. Six. And they're both behind. Just one guy. He was on court right now as well. And Rafael Nadal looking for a 14th final. But it's Djokovic with the break hit. Can he back it up this time? Three errors in the previous game. And shovels one long on the first point. some help from the court from the forehand moved around to hit Djokovic's second serve but just nothing happened on it Mark it down. Big marker pen. I think that might be the second unforced error in this set from Novak Djokovic. Truly incredible. At that buffer, 30 love start. Ball must have been just sitting there so big for him. Missing by a small margin. Another unforced error. That's on behind everyone, of course, against Berrettini. I think he went into the tiebreak with two unforced errors in that third set. And he had two in a row at a critical time when he was up five points to four. So I hope that those two unforced errors don't come back to bite. on the final forehand. Well, it looked like he was just trying to be steady, secure, a strong base. And it couldn't have missed by much off of the face of the racket. It's like London buses, Mark. Wait for one, and then three come along at once. Break point, Nadal. Violation warning, Mr. Djokovic. Djokovic has the time violation called first, and the booze ring round. Got to compose himself here, though. This is a, another massive point. Of course, it's his first warning. Merci.
What a forehand that is. When you consider the time he had to wait and the three unforced errors before, mental toughness from the world number one. 40. Well, what can you say about the return? Was it a little conservative by Rafa? Did the job by getting around hit the forehand? Just sending it up the centre corridor. Too oh. good. Flush. Avantage, Djokovic. It's not a bad return by Nadal. Second shot as well was decent. Merci. Heading down the tee again. 55% of the serves from Djokovic tonight on this ad court going down the tee. And on this side of the court, Djokovic coming with a higher percentage, the slider wide, close to 60% tonight. Not bothering any body serves at all on the juice court. Spin on the forehand and just peppering Avantage. Nadal's backhand. Djokovic. As he has been, as Mark was just saying, on the serve. An unusual stat. 16 unforced errors from Nadal, only five from Djokovic. Missed that one. Maybe just couldn't quite get around in time. And pushes it into the tram lights, as the Serbian cheers will tell you. Djokovic wriggles out of the game. And this time does back up the break. He's a game away from a two sets to one lead. Ball lands on the back edge of the line. Djokovic is just Dancing. misses. Oh, 
Oh, the tie could be the best of the lot with regards to Djokovic's backhand. Yes. Gets that left leg out. Just slides into the ball. Doesn't overcrowd himself. and Djokovic can't believe it. Uh -huh. I mean, that okay. has to be the back edge of the line. I think it's one of those, Mark. We have probably stood where Djokovic is. It looks out the whole way. The rarity, really. Relatively comfortable service hole for Nadal. And that has been rare in this set. But he will ask the question of Novak Djokovic as to whether he can serve this set out. And Nadal's got work to do, as has the stringer. A lot of rackets to be restruck. Yet changing conditions, perhaps. We've mentioned that we, we get the sense that Djokovic is getting much more rotation, RPMs on the ball, forehand, backhand. He's gradually, each set, increased that RPM level. And the, the, the numbers in a lot of areas starting to look very good for the number one seed. Question is, can he maintain that for another game? Have to step out and hold serve. Big moment coming up with two of the biggest players in all of tennis, in all of tennis history. Djokovic looking to get to Grand Slam number 19. Nadal looking to get to 21 and be the outright leader on his own. Can he be stopped here in his living room? Djokovic looking for a two sets to one lead, serving for this third set at 5-4. Sort of jewels have more often than not gone Nadal's way. Didn't know quite which way to go there. Djokovic had an open court just to bunt it into. Just flying off the face of the racket from the dull. Triple the amount of unforced errors now. The Spaniard has committed. Sleep. Of course, even the greatest 
can feel the pressure. Trying to close out a set, especially one of this magnitude. Team time champion responds. Djokovic trying to force the issue. Passed up the line. He's made it. More sensational tennis from the master. It's hard to imagine a couple of points ago, he pulled the trigger on the same forehand. Missed by maybe four feet, five feet. That's incredible, isn't it? That missed forehand at 30, love from Djokovic, instead of having three set points, he's now facing a break point. See you. Anything is possible. And as we tick towards the three hour mark, this match still very much in the balance. And listen to the noise. It's five all. We'll see. Rome, third set, crucial point that Djokovic missed. Yeah. Turned it around. Did we just witness a momentum swing? I was going to say, we always talk about staying in the present, Mark, is in, but that's going to be yeah, even I'm tougher single. for one of the best in the business at doing that, Novak Djokovic. Do you think it will still be lingering in his mind? I mean, there's an opportunity to go. He's traveling along so well in this set. Djokovic behind serves, not that it hasn't been without its, its bumps. But does it stick in his throat? <laughs> it's been funny as well with this crowd. Sometimes it feels like it's full of Serbians. Now it feels like it's full of Spaniards. <laughs> he has struggled holding serve yeah. throughout this set.
competence. He's talking to his team. Djokovic, not entirely sure what he's saying. 15 shot rally. Suddenly, it's Nadal who has the momentum. Let's from your service. Going for the surprise, serve and volley. Rafa. S'il vous plaît. Plenty of time to unload on the forehand as well as the return. It's a healthy return back into play. Counter for the ages. Blow after blow. And now it's Nadal who's wavering again. Break point Djokovic. Oh, missing that forehand could be the biggest blow for Nadal today. Impressive lob by Djokovic. But uh, we see Nadal get his weight back behind the ball so that he can carry it through the overhead. does Djokovic respond and slips over at the point of contact and still control it. Avantage Djokovic. Well, it's rare I'm speechless, Mark, as you know. His back <laughs> is to Nadal Djokovic and he made the, the lob. And it's another break point for Djokovic. Absolutely. 
<laughs> Djokovic said before this match, when he talked about the rivalry, he said, it's not like any other match. It certainly isn't. Hey, they just keep going for one another. Well, it was a bit of a scramble with unforced errors in this third set, and all of a sudden that the pressure cooker has been switched up, and we're seeing some amazing winners from both ends of the court. Yeah. And the atmosphere helping too. Avantage Nadal. Three hours and seven minutes on the clock. It goes without saying, this set has so, so much on it. And it's taken out of both players. <laughs> what a service hole from the dark. It's all happening. Everyone on this court living every second. Nadal, my passage is a sign. of both players. Legends of the sport on Chatrier. And two huge games going the way of Nadal. And we keep thinking each moment is a big turning point. But there's been so many turning points, well, it's impossible to tell. Well, Euro 2020 begins very soon and it feels like a football arena right now. The crowd's just prepping for Euro 2021. <laughs> <laughs> well, this match has lived up to the expectations. It's not often, that is always the case. Djokovic has so now got to just calm himself down and try and serve to stay in the set. 5 6. Oh! As I said, we were 2020. Begins soon. It's actually already began. Yeah, with, with that late in the day, time has flown by. First match is tonight. Right now, I think everyone's focus is on the tennis. Euro 2020 held over from last year? Yes, they're still calling it Euro 2020. Feels right now the crowd is more with Nadal. As I've said before, the momentum certainly is. He's won three games in a row. Merci, Madame Zamisou. Another mid-court ball, just in a different position. Looks like he's trying to flatten that ball out, just revert back to the heavy RPMs. Oh, 
was a difficult overhead. He had to be sharp with his feet and was. Ronda. Able to get the ball down, leaning on that backhand up the line. Premier service. S'il vous plaît. Breaker. <laughs> Let's just have more of a festival like atmosphere. I mean, it's only been an hour and 16 minutes this set. Why not have more of it? Out there to be hit. And Nadal, right now, doesn't need a second invitation with this shot. Djokovic knew as soon as he struck his backhand, he was in trouble. on the ropes. Now it's the other way around. Oh, the great champion is not prepared to lie down just yet. Nadal sees his first set point. S'il vous plaît. Set point down. Nerves of steel from the world number one. Yes, it was. And maybe in the back of Djokovic's head, he knows at those crucial moments what will Nadal do is revert back to what he's relied upon for years here at Roland Garros, and that is to go further back. Both players 
not Avantage. holding anything back. Djokovic. Every single game, a mini roller coaster ride. We still have no clue who will end on a high. The end of this set. Chance to take it into the tiebreak again for Djokovic. When you consider what had happened in the last two or three games, what even happened in that game, Djokovic showing just why he is an all time great. And we will have a tiebreaker. He saves a set point, and we go on in this truly epic set. And incidentally, as much as he wanted a tiebreak, tiebreaks haven't been great to him in this tournament. He's 0 3. Lost the one against Berrettini, lost both against Musetti. Both Italians very creative from the backcourt, had the firepower, did Merci. Berrettini. Nadal, different setup altogether. Nadal, incidentally, his only tiebreaker in this tournament came in round one against Poprin was able to win that one 7-3. Oh. Oh, I don't think anyone knows what is going to happen next, which is the beauty of our sport. Matches like this. Nadal looking for a towel. There's none up his end on that side of the court. Just measuring the forehand, Djokovic. Not going for depth into the corner. Rather choosing the, the corner of the service box. Not rushing through the ball. early on and this time can't make the drop oh that certainly opened up the point the door for Djokovic 
That would be some tension. There has to be tension. Trying to pull off that drop shot. Both players will feel like they should have won this set. Nadal's had a set point. Djokovic has served for the set. shot usually wow. you'd put your house Good. on Djokovic Nine. making well, this is a different scenario altogether himself forward Djokovic wow, still Papu. plenty to be done on the final ball well, that was Mark Woodford-esque thank you P Dodgers I'm not sure that uh, I'd still be working in this match and it was a gem though particularly in the, the circumstances yeah taking the, the first ball in the air and trying to as you say, bully his way to net. In. Just a, a bunt volley in short. Great value and pulls level to three all. This set, incidentally, an hour and 27 minutes long. And what it all means is that I'm afraid the crowd will have to leave in 20 to 25 minutes, and it doesn't look like the match will be done in that time. Let's just focus in on the beauty of this set and this tiebreak, which is still in the balance. Let Jomia service. throughout the rally God and turns God. it all on his head God. with this forehand Djokovic. well by that reaction you have to think that maybe he caught it up the top of the racket wasn't intentional I can tell you, by the way, that there's a group of Serbian fans to our right, to Nadal's right, and they are, at the moment, doing the, the godlike praise to Novak Djokovic after that shot. in the world he did all the hard work just couldn't get enough on that backhand Saint sat there as did the forehand volley and we now have a shot each that they will both perhaps look back to if they don't win this set 
Djokovic missing the easy forehand at 5 4 30 love. Nadal missing to him. That was a pretty easy volley. Nothing happened before. Top of it. Well, who would have guessed that Nadal would try a second consecutive drop shot? Well, Djokovic didn't. <laughs> Neither did we. <laughs> Wow. So now decision for Djokovic. That was a healthy flat serve wide. Does he revert back to down the tee? Wow. I think the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> With a bit more sting, 197. Just a third ace of the match for Djokovic. But what a timely one. And it's two set points for the world number one. who somehow wins it. A set that has lasted an hour and 32 minutes, full of drama and inspired tennis. Mark, again, can you just put into context what we just saw there from Novak Djokovic when you consider he was up 5-4, 30 love, easy forehand for him, misses it, and then it looked like the set was going to slip away, had to face a set point. And well, it's Djokovic has been playing such tidy tennis. Reprise. Obviously, navigating the, the highs and the lows, but for him to actually, if he'd gone down two sets to one, incredibly, Rafa was the first one to have set point in that third mm. set. It felt like that he was behind. It felt like that it was he had to play catch up from a double breakdown. Not that it did, was a double break, but everything was supporting. Novak Djokovic. So for him to manage that at that moment and actually play a drop shot, mm. I think uh, he might be primed Merci, to try and take this in four sets. Has the benefit of uh, starting to the fourth set with serve. Just how important you wonder this game is after. As I said in commentary, one of the truly all-time great sets of tennis you will witness. Certainly from a drama point of view. I feel like it has to be a, a big drop-off in form, level, standard by Novak Djokovic if he doesn't take this set ultimately R rafa has been redlining for some time if he is the first one to drop his level uh, and mark three hours and 36 minutes on the clock Point now because of that enormous set that was 97 minutes long i mean usually we're in a fifth set right now rather than a fourth set with regards to the minutes on the clock
So, with regards to that, will fatigue Grand play a part? And, and if it does, who will it affect? Oh, I, I don't think it, you know at all. Fatigue will come into this. You know, both players, no one had a distinct advantage as far as court time leading into today's match. It's just an unusual circumstance that we find ourselves in. That Rafa is down two sets to one. How does Novak handle that? He's never had him in this position before. The time that he won, it was straight sets. It's quite amazing, isn't it, with all the meetings that they've had before? Eight of them here, which is what we're referring to. Ronda. Never been two sets to one up. As I said a few moments ago, Nadal only twice in all of the times he has played this event has he been two sets to one down since 2005. <laughs> but he's looking to respond straight away. Again, Djokovic up love 30. And then getting into trouble. Up 30 love, I should say. And, and he hangs in this point. That's another shot that Djokovic has and can't put it away. Is he as close to not being human as you've ever seen on a tennis court, Mark? On, on a clay court? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Superhuman. It's, it's just ridiculous when you consider the set that we've just witnessed, the body blow he must have taken by having that set point, investing so much in it, having 30 love down. And yet find something from somewhere, and all of a sudden, he's the favorite for this set. Up a break. Saw a lot of twists and turns in the second set. There's still going to be a fair few more. Yeah. 11 breaks a serve in total in this match.
Just the right way, but just couldn't get hold of the forehand. Turns the punt. How's he done that? Is there anyone better at turning defence into attack? I don't think Djokovic can quite believe he's lost well that point. Again, the disguise on the drop. And Djokovic nowhere near. Merci. La première service. Feels like every single point for the last two hours has had so much riding on it. Hasn't been any let up. to attack this time in just the one strike and what a hold that is from love 30 down no, 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 no. just don't know what is going to happen next in each and every point the double fault and you thought Djokovic might be breaking back but you've got to do what these guys are doing and stay in the present not get ahead Nadal backs up the break for a two-love lead. <laughs> Too good. <laughs> that drop shot has been a little hit and miss. 
He's able to force Nadal well back there. Got the execution just right. The ball dying away. It's a sizzler. Just flies off the strings. Meaty return from Nadal. Taken on the rise by Djokovic. Again, that is, as I was saying, it feels like almost every game has been a, a mini marathon, a mini epic. That's a rarity. Quick fire, love service hold for Djokovic to get on the board in set four. And the intensity continuing to rise. And here Rafa on the change of ends, just asking the ball kids. Bring their ice towel. A bit of food for Djokovic. Maintain those energy levels for him. What a response again from the dark. Another double, a double fault in his last service game as well. Seventh of the match for Nadal. And incidentally, if he's going to win this match, the Spaniard, he's going to have to do it in five. He's only had two five-setters in the history of this tournament since 2005. Did win them both, beat Isner. 
2011. And then beat his opponent today, 9-7 in the fifth in the semi-final back in 2013. But Djokovic wants to win this one in four. And he'll have two break Ten, back points. Five. Costly double fault by Nadal opening the door for Djokovic. Djokovic does break back. And we continue to meander one way, then the other. Suddenly, the momentum is back with the serve. And Mark, I mean, you've been here for pretty much all of Rafa Nadal's 13 triumphs. Is this the best you've seen a player play against him in his living room? Well, I, I have distinct memories of that there isn't a match, given that the big man was serving and volleying. It was quite extraordinary that the bounce that he got off from the court. It was a very warm day as well. But isn't it was extracting Down some zero. errors and just was covering that using his reach and, and presence. Whereas the Sodling match, I actually called that one as, as well. And, and that was just superb ball striking from the Swede, given the conditions. But because he's now built this amazing record, it doesn't seem to be that will be matched by anyone in our sport again. I think now that this is elevated into such a, a battle royale for the times. Djokovic is stepping up right now. Djokovic, Djokovic is. I don't think this is the best match that Nadal has, has played. He had to play his best tennis to take on John Isner came up a little short. It was taken away from him by Soderling, but it wasn't through any spotty play by Rafa. And that was going to be my next question. Well, Nadal's level has dropped. He's dropped in the scoreboard, that's for sure. Third game in a row for Djokovic as he edges in front in the fourth. Djokovic, who said before this match, I believe I can win. He's talking about the head-to-head -head record on, on clay at Roland Garros. He said, I wouldn't be here unless I believe I can win. He also talked about the fact that he praised Rafael Nadal, saying this is why he plays tennis. It's why he has become so good, really, because they've all pushed each other. And they're pushing each other to further limits tonight. the amount of strapping Nadal has to protect the ankle. So the, the trainer is on here. Nadal has just had a, a load of strapping taking off, taken off the ankle, or at least the ankle support. Oh, it looks like it will probably be reapplied. What do you make of this, Mark? Well, I'm not sure that it is going to be reapplied. Maybe it's not. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay. Fresh pair of socks. Mm. You need to change something. It'd be a little strange just to change one side of your socks, but not the other. Looks like that is what Nadal is going to do here. Needs something to change. He's two sets to one down. He's lost the last three games. It's the 
finish line for Novak Djokovic just comes into the view. Yeah, it's there peripherally. Novak being able to motor through the last two service games. Rebounding from a breakdown. A reminder, Steph sits a pass. Possibly watching this somewhere. Maybe he's tucked up in bed, we don't know. And he awaits the winner of this titanic battle. The winner earlier on today against Sasha Zverev. First Grand Slam final for Tsitsipas. And if it is to be Djokovic, I can tell you their meeting in Rome was something else as well. So I'm sure we'll get a glorious final too. But right now, we are transfixed by this semi final. Nadal looking to stop the rot. 2 3. Looking to thread consecutive points, build an early lead on his serve. Being under a bit of stress in both games, surrendering one serve and having to respond from Love 30, the first time that he served in this set. into the corner and that was a bullet from the serve <laughs> Novak special delivery Understandably, wants it checked. Razdaraki Moore quickly down to confirm that it was wide. Pressure on everyone's shoulders, you have to say. The umpire's had a, a sterling match so far as well. Pontins. Very clear, very quick with her overalls. And Djokovic reading where Nadal was going to go, and the Spaniard was left exposed. And tied up in another edgy game on surf is Nadal. And into a fifth hour. It. it was a huge miss hit. Oh, it did just go wide, and once again, Nadal looking a little ragged here. He's responded before. Can he respond again? He's responded before, but he's never been in this situation to respond back. Listen. Great point, Djokovic, and a chance to win a fourth straight game. And he finds the baseline with the return. And it is a fourth straight game. The finish line is in sight too. Djokovic, man, Djokovic looking to do what no one else has done here and beat Rafael Nadal for a second time at Roland Garros. 
we've been talking about it in the past, whether this is the toughest task in all of sport. Nadal was asked about it in his press conference and he didn't want to answer. Djokovic on the brink of perhaps achieving that goal. Still a fair amount of time and play left in this match, but when you consider Djokovic lost the first five games here, the way he was outplayed as well in last year's final, it's quite a mind-blowing response, the last three sets. tennis to be played and when this guy is on the court a match is never over until it's over well he'll keep fighting there's no doubt about that Rafa executing with the forehand that's damaged so many people Retrospect, Pete, I, I, I think, yes, that five-love start that Nadal had just opened the door, allowed Djokovic some breathing room, some belief that it created, that planted the seed of belief for Djokovic. You never know, if it had been a, a six-love, six-one set, maybe an early break for Rafa, that might have been able to just set the tone in his favour. Especially when you consider what happened last year. It's been some turnaround. And this could still turn around again. And the first big sign of tension with that finish line, line coming into view. The third double fault. Merci, mesdames et messieurs. What a response again. It's been a uh, match winner for Djokovic, that serve out wide he hasn't deviated away from that direction tonight on the juice court nor on the ad court really just shut down the returning ability of nadal Once again, just wondrous tennis, and Djokovic is a game away.
Djokovic, Marc Sanchez. Well, I think Rafa in two minds clearly had a ball that was in the air, hoping for it to go long, but it took away his advantage, the control of the rest of the rally. And uh, Novak displaying some fabulous touch once again. Slender lead in the winners. The number one seed, 50. 47 from Nadal's end of the court. I think it's 30 of them from the forehand side. And for the first time in many a year, Nadal facing down the barrel. We haven't had to say that uh, too many times. Well, all the stats were in the favour of Rafael Nadal, especially after he won that first set. He's never lost a match here at Roland Garros for the setup. He's 13 from 13 in semi-finals at this event. And if there's anyone who's going to be a stat killer, it's Novak Djokovic. It may as well be the number one player in the world. Nadal serving to stay in the championships. Issue today. An eighth double fault. Just another step closer for Novak Djokovic. It's hard to imagine the biggest upset from the number one player in the world. He's missed it. Five match wins in a row, four titles in a row. Nadal, is it all going to come to an end for the 13th time? Roland Garros champion. It's three match points for Novak Djokovic. Djokovic does the unthinkable as Rafa's reign is over. A truly incredible performance from the world number one. Defeats Nadal at Roland Garros for the second time in his career to reach a sixth Roland Garros final. But what a dramatic and stunning encounter.
two of the all-time greats produced one of the all-time greats with regards to the match. 3-6, 6-3, 7-6, 6-2 in four hours and 11 minutes. Well, it's just so unusual, so rare to see him walk off Chatrier having lost a match, but what a phenomenal champion he is. The greatest ever player that this tournament has seen. Oui, Cédric, dis-moi. Novak, bravo. Je voudrais vous dire merci à Rafa et à toi, Novak, pour ce spectacle incroyable. Je pense que ça a été un privilège pour chaque personne ici, sur ce cours Philippe Châtrier, d'assister à ce combat magnifique. Merci. Merci. <rire> je veux, je... Bonsoir. Euh... <rire> Première chose que je dois dire, c'est que c'était mon privilège aussi pour être sur le cours avec Rafa dans ce cette, euh, cette incroyable match. C'était sûrement le, le plus grand match que j'ai joué ici à Paris, c'est sûr. Et aussi, euh, aussi le match avec la plus belle, euh, plus belle atmosphère, ambiance, et la plus belle euh, énergie. Incroyable, merci. Mais pour euh, tous les deux joueurs, pour tous les deux joueurs, le soutien était incroyable. Merci beaucoup, vous êtes, vous êtes vraiment fantastique. Merci. Yeah, it has been the, the best support he had for the both players, and he felt like it was. It has been a privilege for him as well to be on court with Rafa tonight. Dans un match comme celui-ci, où il y a un tel combat, une telle énergie physique, une telle pression, comment fais-tu pour garder la lucidité, pour choisir les coups, glisser l'amorti Moi, je t'avoue que j'étais impressionné. Oui, <rire> évidemment que, que si tu veux gagner contre Rafa à, à, à son cours, tu vraiment dois jouer le, ton meilleur tennis. Donc euh, ce soir, c'était vraiment le soir de, de mon meilleur tennis. C est, c est, c est. Euh. Après, euh, je pense qu'il est difficile de trouver le, le mot pour euh, expliquer le, le pression. <rire> pression jouée contre lui ici. C'est autre niveau, je, je pense. C'est quelque chose peut-être euh, très spécial dans notre sport. Il est très, très difficile de trouver les mots pour décrire how spécial est it to play Rafa ici. And uh, how difficult is it to, to explain what is the pressure to be here against Rafa? May no pressure, yeah, yeah. No, no pressure. pressure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at least that's what you tell yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you tell yourself no pressure, but uh, there is a lot of pressure, trust me. Yeah. But... La pression est privilège, donc... Uh, ça, va ça veut dire que, que tu fais quelque chose de très important et je suis très heureux d'être dans cette situation parce que je, je cherche de, 
vraiment améliorer mon, euh, mon caractère, mon, mon, mon jour, en ce moment, cette moment ici, ce match ici. Yeah. Novak is always looking for to improve, to improve his character, his, his movement, his, himself as a person, I guess, and of course his tennis. Oui, je dis déjà en français. En français. <laughs> Novak, <laughs> on va te laisser aller te reposer pour préparer ta finale dimanche. Oui. Merci, Merci à beaucoup. toi. Merci tout le monde. Merci le staff. Novak Djokovic. Well, how did you begin with uh, that one? Novak Djokovic uh, <laughs> ending things off. Of course, Cedric Pielin saying he's got the final on Sunday to uh, now get ready for. But of course, he will have relished uh, getting a victory over Rafa Nadal for the first time in five years. And what a win to get it here.